right, in this week's tech tip, we're going to be talking about Gmail. And actually, there's so much to learn about Gmail that we're going to break it into three weeks worth of tech tips on Gmail. So today's uh, video, we're just going to talk about labeling, themes, signatures, and make sure I got everything. Label, theme, signatures, and then we're going to go over a couple other um, settings and a couple shortcuts that are kind of fun. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is labels. You might want to think about organizing your Gmail labels similar to how you have your Google Drive organized. So your labels over here, so right there where you get those little tabs. So these are labels that I have. So you want to think about these labels as folders and you could have subfolders also. So for example, here I have testing and then underneath it, so if you see next to testing, there's that little um, little shark tooth going the sideways. If I click on it, I have ACT testing and OST testing. So the big umbrella is testing. Underneath it are the different tests that, that I'm involved with. Now, as you can see with testing, I can color code and I can add emojis. This one I don't have colored, so let me just do that real quick. If you click on the snowman here and go up, there's the label color, and I'm going to make testing, I'm going to make that one red. So, and it asked me if I only want to label the testing one red or if I want to label all of the sub labels. I'm just going to do the main testing one as red. So, it is my personal goal that any email that I do not delete is going to have a label. Let me just show you how to go through and add a label. So I'm going to pull up this email here. You can add a label in a couple different ways. So let me show you. One right here is you just click labels. I'm going to click on that and then I can choose from the labels that I already have. So like I said, I have testing and then here, testing slash ACT online, and then testing slash OST. So I want to choose that one. And then I could just click apply. Another way I could do it, I could just take this and drag it to ACT online. And see how it says move one conversation? And I can just move that right there. See when I grabbed and just drag that whole email over to that label, um, the, the email no longer shows up in my inbox. So just keep that in mind. This one, I just added the label by going up here and adding the testing ACT label. This is still in my inbox. So right there, but you can see it's got a label and that's what I like to see. Let me show you how to just flat out create a label. So here is uh, Ed Connections from the Ohio Department of Education. And this I do want to keep, and I don't think, I, I don't have a label for it anywhere. Um, so I could click Labels again. Now I don't already have an Ohio Department of Education label. So down here it says Create New. So I'm going to create a whole new label. And I'm just going to type it in here. I'm just going to do ODE. I could, of course, add an emoji, which is always fun, by doing the windows and period key. So I can just add, I'll just add that emoji just for fun. And then I'm going to create. And then right there, I've got ODE. So I'll show you what that looks like in the inbox. I can see ODE. That's got the label right there. Now, I'm thinking I probably have a whole bunch of other Ohio Ed updates in my inbox. So I'm going to show you how you can set a label to even past emails and it's called setting up a filter. So if you click on the snowman and see how it says filter messages like these. So I'm going to click on that and this is going to bring up a bunch of options for me. It'll say from and that's what I want. But there's nothing on this page that makes any sense for me. It's right here where I want to go, where it says create filter. Now there's a whole bunch of options. 
So I want to, I can skip the inbox, I can mark as red, there's a bunch of options that you have, but I want to apply the label ODE. And then notice the very last one, it says apply filters to 57 mass matching messages. So what that means is I have 57 of these in my inbox that are from ODE and it will also apply the filter to all of those and it will apply the filter to any incoming emails that I get in the future. So you always want to do that to, to apply to the 57 and then you're going to create a filter and then what the next screen does is it shows you all of those emails from ODE, all of those um, Ed Connection updates. Now what I'm going to do is I don't want them just hanging out in my inbox. I want them all to go in that folder. So I'm going to click on this little, um, right next to this box, the selection box. I'm going to click on the down arrow and I'm going to select all of them. Scroll down, make sure I got all of them. And then I'm going to archive them. And what that means, this little um, down arrow here, it kind of looks like a file folder opened up. What that means is you're going to put those labels, those folders, and you're going to put them in your file folder. I do not want to delete them. That would be bad. I just want to archive them. So I'm going to click archive and they're all going to go right into that label of ODE. So if I go back to ODE, there they all are. So that's how you can set up a label. And you can do it right in your email by going up here, clicking label, and you could create a new one or just pick from the ones that you already have. Or you can just grab the email and drag it to um, the folder that you want. Another thing that you can do, which I just found out, is you can actually add a label to an outgoing message. So here I'm gonna send an email to Laura. The subject line is ACT, makeups. And down here in this, the skinny snowman, if you click that, I can add my own label to an outgoing message. So I'm gonna label it right off the bat, ACT online, and then if she responds to this email, it's already labeled ACT. You can also access your labels from the settings menu. So the settings right here, it looks like a little gear, like a little gear. So you click on settings and then see all settings. And the settings can be a bit overwhelming but if you go here to labels this shows you all of the labels that you already have so here are the ones that I already have and you can create labels within this settings toolbar if you're completely new to labels and let's say you have an idea of maybe six or seven labels big buckets that you want to start with you could just go in here, settings, then labels, and create your labels right here. They will populate over here. And within here, you can then change the color. So you can't really change the color when you're creating them here. It's once you have them and then you click on the snowman and then you can add a label color. So that is everything labels. So the next tip with Gmail is about the themes. So you can personalize your Gmail home and you can use their preloaded themes or you could use your own photos. And just remember you can change it as often as you would like. So to get to your themes, you're gonna go up here to the gear, the settings, click on it. And then you're gonna go down here, right here is themes. They give some options right off the bat, but you always want to view all. You want to know all of your options. So here we can pick, this is the one I have right now, but they have a whole bunch. You can scroll down to all their different themes. 
but you can also use a photo that you have. So if you click here on My Photos, this will automatically pull the photos that you have in your Google Drive. And then there's also this Featured one, and you can go through the Featured Photos, and you have even more options. So I'm gonna go on this main page, pick your theme. I'm going to choose um, this one. That looks cute, a little tea house. And you can see it, it changed it already in the background. And I'm gonna click Save. So right there, I really like that. That's very cute. And that is how you update your theme. The next tip is to set your signature. So once you set your signature on your emails, it will show up automatically at the end of your email every time you send it. You can customize it with font, color, and images. You can add a badge, like I have my Google certification badges set on there. So once again, this is in your settings. So we're gonna go back to the gear here and we're gonna do see all settings. Before we do that, I wanna sneak down here to, to um, some other settings that we have right here. So with the inbox type, I leave mine on default and it is a personal choice. So you might wanna play around with the different ones that they have um, but I just do um, default because I like that you have the different buckets. You've got primary, social, and promotion. You just gotta make sure that you are checking those um, so that you're not missing any emails. But if you look at the important first, so the, if I did the important first, what this means is Gmail uses their magic and it determines what is flagged as important. So that's sort of that artificial intelligence at work in this type of inbox, these important messages are shown first. So it's not necessarily your unread messages. It is, it's what the, the Gmail magic determines as being important. I tried it for a little bit, didn't like it. Feel free to play around and see if you like how it's set up. The next one is unread first, and this will show all your unread emails first. This is a helpful inbox type if you have a bunch of unread uh, messages that are kind of buried in the many pages of your inbox. And it'll help you clear out older unread messages in no time. So that could be an option. The starred first is just like in Google Drive, you can star messages that you deem important or that you want quick access to in your, in your inbox. And those will show up first in that starred first option. The priority, this inbox combines unread, important, and starred to create a super efficient <laughs> inbox. And then the, the next one is multiple. And this is similar to priority, but it's customizable. So my advice would be just to play around and see what matches your preference. I personally, I just like the default. Okay, so now let's go back to talking about your signature. So we gotta see all of the settings to do the signature. Now you're gonna scroll, here are all of these settings and we are in the general tab. And we're gonna scroll all the way down and here is signature. So right here is my signature. And all you do is you just start typing. So as you can see, my signature, I picked a different font for that. And this looks very familiar. This looks like our Google Doc toolbar. If I scroll down, so it doesn't give you, a, this window's not very big. So if you scroll down, now here are the pictures that I have, but if you wanted to add one, you just click there, click on the image icon. And just like a lot of the different Google Docs and slides and stuff, you have choices. You can grab it from your drive, your Google Drive. You can upload it from your computer or you can use a web address. So I'm just gonna grab something from my drive just so you can see. So there's kittens. Oh, I have a lot of kittens. So I'm gonna do that one. And you can see it brings it in pretty big. So I'm gonna click on it 
and then down here it'll give me options small medium large or I could just remove it so I'm gonna do small and now I've just got that little kitten right there and then when you're done with your signature then you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and do save if you don't click save changes you will not have a signature now another one that I wanted to show you since we have spring break coming up, I wanna show you how to set your out of office reply for your email. So once again, we're gonna dive back into the settings, go to see all settings, and then we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom. But before we do that, I want to show you a couple things in the general settings. So, maximum page size so this shows how many emails you have per page so i have it maxed at 100 because i want to see as many as i can this was a game changer for me right here undo send when you send an email you have a certain amount of time where you can undo send okay so if you notice when you send an email there's just like this little um, speech bubble that pops up and says, you know, sent an email to Chloe and then next to it in blue is undo. The defaults, the default on that is I think 10 seconds. I maxed it out at 30. So that little message will hover at the bottom saying that I sent an email to Chloe. That message, that undo send message will be there for 30 seconds. So I have a chance to process in my brain, and if I needed to undo that email, I could click undo real quick, and it pops up the email. And then I could like add something. So it's like, oh, I forgot to add the attachment. And then I undo send, add, attach the attachment, send it. That was a huge gauge changer for me. I love that. Um, default reply behavior. Um, you could just by default, you could have it do reply. So then you don't accidentally do one of the annoying reply alls. Um, da, 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 da. You can also set your default text style. So if you like um, Tahoma and you want all of your stuff to be large text, and you always want it to be a certain color, you could set that. Um, so, and if you notice, it says, this is what your body text will look like. Then you have the autocorrect. You can turn that off if that bothers you. Um, spelling suggestions, you can turn that off. You can turn it on. Um, just, it, it's, it's fun to go through these different um, settings and set it so that, so that your Gmail is set the way you want it to be set. The conversation view, I turn that off. If you have it on, if you have conversation view on, it just puts all of the replies to an email in just that one email. It doesn't split them out. I like them split out, and that's just a personal preference. Now, they, this is part of that Gmail artificial intelligence is the nudges. I do like the nudges because every once in a while it will catch something. It's like, you have not replied to this email and it'll pop it up in my, um, up in my inbox. Now, keyboard shortcuts, there are, really, there are a bunch of really cool keyboard shortcuts for Gmail. And I'll go into that more when we have our um, advanced Gmail video. So the default is that the keyboard shortcuts are turned off. So I have them turned on because I... I like the keyboard shortcuts, they're pretty sweet. We will talk in a minute about how to update your picture. <clears throat> we did our signature. Now if you scroll all the way to the bottom, here is the vacation reminder. You set the first day that you want this vacation reminder to start, and then you set the last day when you want it to automatically turn off. And then of course you have to re remember to turn it on, vacation reminder on. So I'm gonna turn mine off because I don't want this going out to people uh, because it's not spring break. You set your body of your email, what you want it to say. And then down here, 
you have choices. So you can only send a response to people in my contacts, or you can only send a response to people in Washington local schools. Or you could just leave it blank. And that means that everyone will get your um, vacation reminder. And then like everything else, you have to save the changes to your vacation reminder. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you was how to change your picture. So right up here, you see um, my little Bitmoji picture up here. If you just click on your picture icon, so this little camera icon, click on that, and then you can upload a photo or you can look at the photos that you already have. So I'm gonna upload a picture and then I click select photo. So I'm gonna pick a picture from my computer, click open. All right, and then I can adjust the size of it. I can crop it and then hit save as profile picture. And there's my new picture. All right, so this is the basics of Gmail. The next Next week, we're going to talk about searching, and we'll talk briefly about some add-ons, and then the task, calendar, and keep, and then some other ideas that, that uh, I will come up between now and then. And then we're going to have one more that talks about like how you can schedule your emails to go out, how to use that toolbar, how to snooze emails, and some template responses. So there's a lot with Gmail, a lot to cover. So if you subscribe to, to my YouTube channel, um, you can get those advanced and intermediate videos faster because I'm gonna knock those out this weekend, I think. So subscribe and you'll get a notification when there is a new video. All right, have a great day.